I want to bring in former federal prosecutor now, Renato Mariotti. Uh, thank you for being with us tonight. A possible violation of the Espionage Act, obstruction um, statute. If a crime was committed here, and that's a gigantic if, what are the potential legal ramifications? Oh, very serious matter. I mean, this would be a felony. It would be punishable by years in prison. I have to say that compared to a lot of speculation regarding potential illegalities on the, you know, by the former president, this is very real, and I think uh, very should be very concerning to him and his team, uh, given uh, that there aren't a lot of good reasons to have these documents. What are the options right now, Renato, for the Trump legal team? Um, how would they strategize around the developments of today? Well, if I was on his team, the first thing I would be trying to figure out is whether or not the Justice Department was going to continue this investigation or whether this was all done just in an effort to grab the documents. I think it's apparent that there was not full cooperation uh, with the uh, government. Otherwise, there would be no need for this and they would have not had anything to, to obtain via search warrant. And so this may just have been a step for the Justice Department to grab the documents. But if this is ongoing, I think it presents a real problem for the former president. And I think he needs to figure out, you know, as a defense, how he can say he did not know that these documents were there or he didn't know that the government uh, wanted them or that they were top secret or something along those lines, that will probably involve pointing the finger at somebody else. Uh, the issue for him is if it's an attorney, then that would waive, waive privilege. So I think he's going to have to tread very carefully. Right. That was one point that was made clear or that was not made clear in the release of the documents today. Is the DOJ specifically looking at Donald Trump? Right. This is a big property. There are a lot of people. Or are they looking at other associates who may have had access? And would that be legal defense for him to say, I, I one, declassified it. And two, I had no knowledge it existed in this house. So I think the declassification won't really be a defense here. You can violate all of those statutes, even if the the uh, information is not classified. In fact, the Espionage Act was created before our modern classification system. It's an old statute. Um, so I think, I do think, though, he's going to have to say, um, did, you know, was, you know, he's going to have to say, I was not personally aware of this. I think if if there's charges here, they're, the, char the, the person that they would be aiming for is Trump. I don't really think that they're going to go through all this trouble and charge some aid uh, to Trump. I don't think that's going to happen here. The, the issue is I think Trump could say all these conversations and negotiations with uh, the, you know, the FARA and the, and the Justice Department, those were all done by other people. I thought they took care of it. I thought everything was, was fine. Um, maybe. Um, and but that, of course, means that he's pointing the finger at others who, who are, you know, who um, I, I don't think are going to want to take the fall for him. Neither the government nor the former president proposed releasing the affidavit, which clearly would provide a lot more detail and insight into what the DOJ knows, what evidence they have and what they were looking for. Um, how likely is it that that affidavit will be made public? Several news organizations pushing for its release. And if, if not, um, will it ever be? So I don't think the news organizations are going to get the affidavit released. I don't think that will happen. Um, there are a lot of good reasons for the government not to want to reveal uh, information uh, regarding, for example, sensitive matters and, and uh, documents here. Uh, similarly, for the former president, I, I suspect that the affidavit is, doesn't uh, paint him in a, in a positive light and that, frankly, having less information so that he can uh, spin you know, and give his own version of it, I think, is a better situation for him. Uh, as for so I think that the only way we're going to see this affidavit is if there are charges and then ultimately the affidavit is, you know, potentially uh, uh, presented in evidence in that case. Where does the Justice Department go from here? What's the next step? So one of two things, either they're satisfied with the fact that they've retrieved this material and the purpose of all this was just to retrieve the material. And if that happens, then I think th this goes no further and they, they, they close the matter now that they have the material in their possession. Or secondly, they move forward and pursue charges, in which case, you know, this is a fairly straightforward case, much more straightforward than a lot of uh, things that get bandied about, simply because 
the mere possession of these documents um, is itself uh, care, gets you very far along the road towards proving the case. And the fact that there were all these prior conversations and warnings, I think, helps them establish a, a mental state here that would need to be required. You know, part of the reason that all of these documents, the search warrants, the receipt, are generally kept secret, they're not made public, is to protect the integrity of an ongoing investigation, to protect the integrity of the parties involved. There was obviously a lot of public pressure to release what we had uh, made available today to the public and to the media. Does that change the strategy? Um, does it complicate the investigation moving forward by releasing that, or is it just more transparency? Uh, I do think it does create some complications. I think things have already gotten complicated for the FBI. You know, there have been uh, reports of unprecedented amounts of threats that have been levied against the uh, FBI and the Justice Department. So I do think it's complicating now that their every move that they make are, is going to be watched, it's going to be observed, it's going to be carefully scrutinized. Um, I think, you know, but a big reason why the uh, search warrant would ordinarily be kept secret is actually to protect the rights of the person whose premises were searched, in this case, Donald Trump's. I mean, usually, if this is a typical case, if one of my clients had their office searched, uh, we wouldn't want the whole world to know that the business uh, was, you know, had a search warrant executed at the office because that would unfairly prejudice them when no one is even accused of a crime, much less charged or convicted. And so here, I think Garland made a big point of saying that Trump was the one who first uh, made this public and that there was a lot of discussion about this, you know, by himself and his allies to essentially say that there was no need to be concerned about the rights of the defendant in this particular situation. That yeah, seems like the ball back in the DOJ's court at this point. Uh, Renato Mariotti, uh, it, it appears this is the beginning of a potentially long legal battle and process. So we'll be following it closely. Appreciate your time and insight tonight. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.